welcome to Intro to Programming, Chapter 1. So before we get started, I want to talk about getting your setup ready. Um, and well, before that, I want to talk about the course itself. So basically, this is going to be like the bare bones basics of programming, and we'll be using the Python language. Um, if you're intermediate at programming or like advanced, this is not the course for you. You know all the stuff that I'm going over. And uh, just for some clarifications, this isn't this course is like not going to teach you how to build a website. Um, it's just more like programming. It's like I guess you could say general. This class will have like if you learn Python, it'll help you learn other languages such as C++. Um, but yeah, before we get into all that, all of the programming stuff, let's talk about setup. So first, um, go on the internet and you'll be downloading Visual Studio Code. It's here on this website, code.visualstudio.com. And then if you're on Mac, which I am on, you'll download that. And if you're on Windows, you'll download the Windows version. Afterwards, if you are on Mac, you'll go to python.org and you'll download Python, the latest version, 3.83, .3, at the time of this video. And if you're on Windows, you'll actually go to the Microsoft App Store and download Python. So yeah, those are just two quick setup things and then let me close this. Okay, let's see. So when you open Visual Studio Code, I don't have the welcome, let me see if I can, let me try and go back. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Okay. So when you open Visual Studio Code, you'll be seeing something like this. And I want you to go to the extensions here and you'll download, you'll install Code Runner. So just type Code Runner in there and you'll see here. And this, this, you'll install it. Mine says uninstall because it's installed currently. Then next, you'll install the Python extension. So just type Python. And up here, you see, you'll install here. And likewise, I already have mine installed. Okay, I'm just gonna close this tab. So yeah, that's what you need to do for setting up, but let's jump back, or let's jump into the presentation. So intro to programming, chapter one. Agenda, what is programming? A quick history and future of programming. Why program? How a programmer thinks. We'll do a hello world program. I'll talk about variables, and then getting user input and giving output. And if the video is going fast, you know, you can pause it, rewind it, and come back to this lecture for reference. So what is programming? Basically, it's giving your computer a set of instructions to follow. Coding, oh, sorry. Um, programming, it involves problem solving and critical thinking. Coding is like the actual writing of lines of code that describe a program to the computer. Now there are many programming languages, but common ones include Python, C++, Swift, Ruby, and JavaScript. And like I said, we'll be doing Python in this course. I have a strong C++ background. I studied it like over three years in university. Um, but yeah, I wanna do Python. I think Python is a fun language and I think it's beginner friendly 
and HTML is not considered a programming language. It kind of just like describes a website. You know, it's kind of like, it's more like designing and telling a computer how you want something designed versus like problem solving and like calculations. And if you're interested in web development, also like front end stack, um, I recommend doing HTML, um, CSS, and JavaScript. I believe those are like the three core web development languages. Okay. So a history of programming. So one important figure was Ada Lovelace. She's um, referred to as the first computer programmer, and she lived from 1815 to 1852. And I won't read all of these bullet points, but um, basically she was translating this article on something called an analytical engine, but she added her own thoughts and comments, which were three times larger, three times longer than the original article, and it. Uh, Described how codes could be created for the device to handle letters, symbols, and numbers. She also theorized what, basically what loops are. And yeah, loops, they're important in programming. And on the left, there's a picture of Ada. And then on the right, there's an analytical engine. Jump forward and you... There's Alan Turing. He was a mathematician, computer scientist. He lived 1912 to 1954, and that's a picture of him on the right. And in 1936, he invented the Turing machine. It was like a, like a math, ma mathematical model of computation. It defined an abstract machine that manipulated symbols on a strip of tape according to a table of rules. And they say that it can simulate any algorithm, no matter how complicated, even algorithms today. And there's some picture. I put a picture of Minecraft because some people replicated the Turing machine in Minecraft. That's pretty neat. And they did the same thing in Magic the Gathering. Okay. And later on, Fortran, it was developed in 1954 um, I believe like the first like commercial f version of Fortran um, it's the first they say it's the first commercial coding language it was made by John Backus and his team at IBM and Fortran um, it like stands for formula translation there's a picture of John Backus and a hello world program in Fortran <clears throat> okay, and as we kind of get closer to the modern day, 1984, Apple and IBM came out with new models. Apple released the first gen Macint Macintosh, and the first computer to use a GUI, a GUI, graphical user interface, and a mouse. I believe, um, was it Apple that made the first GUI? The first, like, computer to use a GUI? And uh, yeah, I put popular for the normies because um, this was like more user friendly, you know. And before GUIs, people used the terminal and it was just like a black box with like white text. There's no mouse, you know, like not all of this colorful stuff. <clears throat> and so the future of programming. So here I put some pictures. This is like AI. Here is like algorithms, VR, coding languages. Yeah, coding languages, um, they do get updated, you know, and like they get more, like with the updates, they try, I guess, like make a better version of it. Okay, so why program? Programming allows us to automate, collect data, manage it, calculate it, analyze it. And um, outside of that, it can boost problem solving and logical skills. 
So how does a programmer think? They use logic when solving problems. They structure problems into objectives to complete. They break things down into simple, step, simple steps. They follow the code. They write step by step to see faults in logic. They turn abstract into concrete. Okay, so hello world. So your first program, hello world. It's the traditional first program that new programmers do when starting out. And let's give it a try. So we're going to head on over to Visual Studio Code. And let's see. I'll do it like it's. So we'll go to File. You can go up here and do File, New File. Um, let's see. I think they give you like, you'll see like the Windows command here, or like you go up and get to File. So I'm going to do File, New File. You see Entitled uh, and one here. And we're going to write our first program. So we're going to do print, left parentheses, and Visual Studio Code will automatically do the right parentheses. And then double quotations, we'll write hello world exclamation mark double quotations. And now let's save this. You can do like control S or command S or also go up to the top and do file save. We're going to do uh, save as and then we're going to save it onto our desktop. We'll just call it main.py. PY is the extension for Python files. I'm going to hit save. Oh wait, I saved in the right spot. <laughs> um, where did I save that? Oh, I just saved it on the... Oops, my bad. Let me just save as again. I want to save this on my desktop. So I'm going to go to desktop, main.py, hit save, it already exists, replace, okay there we go. So save that and you can see that it's a different color now, um, VS Code, It since we saved it as a Python file, Visual Studio Code, it knows that it's a Python file and uh, yeah so it's colored to like kind of mark different parts of your code so you can see here the print function is I believe that's like a yellow and then the hello world is like a pink that's a string oops my battery is getting low be patient <laughs> please Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so we've wrote this and now we're going to hit this play button here, oops, up here. And you see this thing pops up here and we see hello world. We output it hello world and that's your first program. Congratulations. And uh, let's go back here to the PowerPoint. Yep, there's the code there. And now let's talk a little bit about variables. So variables in Python, there are names for places where we store data. They come in multiple types such as strings, characters, integers, and floats. That's not all the types of variables, but those are some basic ones. And each variable has a unique name. So try to use descriptive ones. Well, <laughs> don't use descriptive ones because they're unique, but like use descriptive ones so it's kind of easy for you to know what that value is storing. For example, if I have a variable named like, I don't know, um, my favorite number. Or, 
you know that that variable stores what your favorite number is. And in Python, the variable type isn't defined until you assign it data. Okay, so strings. A string variable is a collection of characters. You can think of them as a text variable. There's multiple ways to manipulate a string variable, but we can save that for another lesson. Some example of strings, hello world, my name is Matthew, a, four, hashtag seven, cash symbol, and blank, just two quotation marks. <laughs> Okay, so let's do some uh, examples here. So let's call a variable, let's call it message. I'm going to do this equal assign, and then I'm going to assign it a value. So the value is going to be a string, because I want message to be a string variable. So how about hello there viewer and then we're going to save our changes to the code and you can tell there's unsaved changes up here with this white circle next to the file so I'm just going to do command s excuse me one second I got sneeze wait no I don't <laughs> um, Okay, so there, we did it. Let's run the code. We'll hit this play button here. And we see oh, that nothing outputted. Running, nothing, then done. So we didn't see anything because we didn't use the print function to print out the value stored in that variable. So if we did something like this, print message and let's save the changes and by the way um, so with code it follows the instructions from top to bottom similar to like if you're reading real life instructions you know you look at the top and then you work your way down so message equals hello there viewer and we're going to print the value stored in the variable message so we saved our changes, and here um, you can clear output to make it look cleaner. And we're gonna hit play, and it says "Hello there, viewer." Awesome. So that's a quick thing on variables um, and characters. So character variables—they are single letter or symbol. You can think of them as a letter variable. Some examples are A, lowercase, capital A, 3, ampersand. Okay, and so let's do that here. So instead of making message a string variable, we're going to make it a character variable. And I use single quotes. I think you can use double quotes, but... um. I'm going to use single quotes and let's use lowercase a. I'm going to save our changes and then let's hit that play button and we get the letter a. I'm going to clear this output. Okay. Now integers. Integer variables, they're a whole number. You can think of them as a number variable and there's multiple ways to manipulate an integer variable. Some examples of integers are 5, negative 12, and 0. So let's do some stuff here. So let's say we have something called num1, and that's our number one variable. And let's give it a value of 10. If we do print, uh, num1 as you probably guessed you're going to see it print out 10 and there it is and we can do we can uh, 
add number variables to something. So like for example, we can say num1 now equals num1 plus 5. So now we should see save the changes, run the code. You should see 15, and yep. So at first, the num1 variable had a value of 10, and then we said that it was equal to what it currently is plus 5. So it currently is 10, adding 5 to it, and now it equals 15, and we print that out. And you can also do stuff like subtraction. Um, you can divide with the slash, and you can multiply with the asterisk. That's above number 8 on the keyboard. So let's do a multiplication example. And we should see 50. So save and play. And there you see 50. So we do that. OK. And now let's do something like this. We have a num1 variable equal to 8 and a num2 variable equal to 4. And we can print num1 plus num2. Save the changes, run it. We get 12. We can also do something like this, where num3 equals num1 plus num2. And then we can just print out num3. So let's hit play. And there you go, 12. So that's something on integers. Now float variables, these are decimal numbers. Some examples are 5.0, negative 12.37, 0, 0.0, and you can do the same stuff with them as you do with integer variables, such as add, divide, plus, minus. Okay, and then, yeah, let me show you that. Yeah, so let's say num1 equals 5.4, print num1, save changes, there you go, and yeah, let me do, I'm going to use command z to go back here, so we have num3, so at first, yeah, we have these as integer variables, but let's say we make them decimal, so like say 7.9, 4.3, save that, and let's run it, and you get 12.2, and you can multiply, let's divide, I'm going to save the changes, I'm going to clear this, and let's run, and you get 1.837, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now here's a question. Let's see what happens when we divide integer variables. So let's say, oops, what if this was 8 and then something that doesn't divide evenly into it, like 3? Let's save the changes and run the code. And you get 2. So what happens there? Basically, Python's like, okay, um, 8 divided by 3, well, let me show you the decimal. Let me show you the float. But basically, it returns a integer, a whole number. It rounds down. But let me just show you the float version. Yeah, you get 2.6, blah, blah. 7. And even though 2.5 and stuff, we round that up when, like, you know, doing math, um, it rounds down. 
So even if it's like 2.9, let me see. What's the best? Let me show you an example. Like, uh, let's say we had 9.0, and it's divided by 2.9. Okay, let me save this. Mm, clear this. So we know that 9 divided by 3 is 3. Let's run this float version though. Okay, so, oh, <laughs> my bad. Let me do 3.1. Save. Okay, so you get 2.903. Now, if these were just integers, 9 and 3. Mm. Okay, this is. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to show is that, like, when you're dividing with integers, it's going to be the whole number, and it's not going to care about the remainder. Like, it won't care about 2.9, blah, blah. I mean, well, <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. Let me, let me just start from the top. And if you know what I'm saying, you can just fast forward. So let's say we have num1 equal to 10, num2 equal to 3, and let's say we print, um, okay, we have num3 equal to num1 divided by num2, so 10 divided by 3, and we're going to print num3. Let's clear this output and run the code, and you get three. But if this was a float, 3.0, 10.0, let's save, let's run it, you get 3.333. You get the remainder. Okay. <laughs> And yeah, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Okay, so working with variables. We can add variables together. We can concatenate them. Um, and concatenating is basically adding two strings. We can set a variable to be equal to an existing variable. Uh, some questions. What happens if you add an integer and a float variable? Would you get an integer or a float? How about with a string and a character variable? So you can go in here and test that for yourself. Um, let's see. So let's make it integer variable. Let's give it a descriptive name. So let's call it int var for int integer variable and we'll give it a value of 5 and then let's say we have something called float var and we give it a value of 3.5 okay let's see what happens when we just print them added together so int var plus float var save the changes let's clear this output and run and we get a float um, value. So let's see if we had a variable called total, and that equals int var plus float var. And if we print out total. Save that. And yeah, we still get 8.5. And now I'm going to do the string. So let's say we have something called str var. And it's a message like hello. And then we have char var. Sounds like Charizard. We'll do single quotes and let's put a capital Z. 
to change to this. Total is going to equal str var concatenated with char var. And we'll print out the total. Okay. And yeah, they concatenate, so they like they mush together and you get hello z. Or hellos. <laughs> and let me show you this. So let's say we had a different string var, let's call it string var2. And it says something like, hello, John. Let me change this here. str var2. So total is going to equal hello concatenated with John. And I'm going to print that out. And we get hello, John. And it's mushed together. And that doesn't, um, it's not how we want it to look. So what we can do, we can put a space after hello. And yeah, space counts like as a character. So let's do that. And we run it and we get hello, John. Or let's backspace that. We could have put a space before John. Save that. We run it and we get hello, John. Okay, so why did when we added them we got a string and a float? So basically, when we added the integer and the float together, we got a float because float variables have a higher rank than integer variables. And we ended up with total being a string variable when we added string and character because strings are a higher ranking than character variables. Now what happens if we try and add a string and an integer or with a float, if we add like numbers and text? So let me just bloop. We have string variable equals Let's say Amanda, and then we have an int variable, and we call it has a value of seven. And then we want a total is going to be string var plus int var. And when we run that, we get an error. So we can't add string variables and integer variables together. Let's say we can't do it with like string with float. We can't do characters and integers and character and float. So that's something. Okay. But let's say we wanted to do that. So there's type conversion and type cast. So with conversion, we basically express the value in a variable as a different type. And with type cast, we actually change that variable into a different type. So I'll show you some examples. So we have string variable and an integer variable. Oh, actually, sorry. The error here, let me do that. Okay, before I get into typecast and type conversion, um, I didn't put the equal sign. So I had a syntax error. So let me, and a syntax error, that's like you made a mistake in like the grammar of your code. Okay, let's run this. Yeah, okay, cannot, con concatenate string and integer objects. So let's clear this. Now let me show you the type conversion. So what we'll do is we have string. We're going to convert int variable into a string. 
And we do that by doing str and putting it in parentheses. So let's save. And now let's run it. And then we get Amanda7. Okay. Now what if we want to add them like their ints? Um, I actually don't <laughs> know or, well, I don't recall what happens. So let's see. So let's say we want to make, we want to convert the string variable, the value Amanda into a integer. I don't think it'll work. Let's see. Yeah. In, yeah, it does not work. I think, let me test something really quick. If you, let me see if this works. No, okay. So we couldn't converge, we couldn't do a conversion from string to integer. Um, yeah, when we converted an integer to string, you know, it just looks at the value seven and it pretty much like turns it into text. So it's like doing something like this. It's still an integer variable, but okay. Um, so you can play around, you can like try and do conversions on different types. Um, let me show you a type casting. So we're going to turn integer variable into a string type variable. So how we do that is doing int var equal to string in parentheses int var. So let's save that. And then let's clear our output, run the code. And there you get 15.7. So this is useful um, if you're getting input from a user and like let's say you wanna write out a message based off the input they give you. If they give you like an integer input, you can turn that into like, you can convert it to a string value and yeah. Okay, let's go back to the slides. Getting input and giving output. So, getting input. In Python, we get input by using the input function. We can store that input that the user gives us into a variable. Um, <clears throat> this the input function allows us to write a prompt inside the parentheses to give a message before getting input. So a prompt is like, you know, enter a number please, or like, tell me your name. And if the user is inputting a number, just type the number. And if the user is inputting a string, put the message in between quotations when you're inputting it. So let's go into VS Code. Let's say we do, let's say input function. So let's just call it. We'll hit play. And it keeps running. And as I'm trying to put input, you can't because you see here it says cannot edit in a read only editor so we can't write like by read only is kind of like presenting basically we can't do inputs in this output tab but what we can do is go to the terminal and run this program and put in an input so we're gonna do ls this kind of just shows us where we are navigating the computer. And it's okay if you don't like understand this terminal stuff. Uh, like 
a lot. But basically, LS, it shows us like the stuff you're at. Oh, here, actually, let me show you this. Okay, if you do PWD, and I believe, okay, maybe different for Windows. And yeah, it shows you you're at like users, Matthew Carr. Let me do LS. Okay, if you're on Windows or Mac, do LS. And if you saved it to your desktop, you can do CD, change directory, and go to desktop, capital D. Okay, then we can do ls, and we see our main.py here. So we're in the directory where the our file is, main.py, main.py. You can hit clear to clear all the stuff off. And to run it, you'll type python space, the name of your file, main.py, hit enter. And this white text box is waiting for us to put in an input. So I'll do five and hit enter. And the program is done. So moving forward, um, we'll use the terminal mainly. You can use the output for just like printing out stuff. But in the terminal, you can give input. Okay, I'll show you an example of putting a prompt. So double quotations, enter a number, please. Space. <clears throat> Save the changes. And then we'll do Python main.py. And also what you can do if you hit up on the arrow key, it'll go to your last command line instruction. So that can save you time versus typing out python main.py every time you want to run or test your code. So hit enter, and there's a prompt. Enter a number, please. And let's say I do four. And the program closes. <clears throat> so there's input, um, but it's not too exciting. So how about we store a variable? We How about we store the value that we input into a variable? So let's call this variable user num, and we'll assign that, we'll assign the value that we get from the input function into the user num variable. And then, how about we print out user num, what the person inputted. Save the changes. Go down here to terminal. And I'm going to hit the up arrow key to get this. Hit enter. Enter a number, please. Let's do 7. I hit enter. And it prints out 7. So yeah, when I type 7 here and hit enter, it store that value into user num, print user num function, prints out 7. <laughs> and, uh, okay, if I wanted to do, let me run this again, a string, uh, a float, I could do 5.3, enter, if I wanted to do a string, I'd be something like, let's say, Matthew, prints out Matthew. I'm going to type clear so I can, like, <clears throat> clear my view of the terminal. Okay, can I go, I'm hitting the arrow two times this time to go do this. And let's do a character, so let's say money symbol. Enter, prints that out. So there you go. Uh, back to our slides. So giving output. In Python, we can give output by using the print function. We've been doing this uh, many times. We can either hard code a message to print out. For example, what we did with our Hello World program, and we like hard coded the message Hello World instead of like putting a variable inside. So like 
message equals hello world print message. And to show why it'd be nice to not hard code, because in general, in programming, you avoid hard coding, like typing out constants and uh, values. Instead, you would store them into a variable. Let's say message equals. Well, let's say we don't. Let's say we don't uh, do that, and we hard code. So let's say we want to print out "Hello World" a bunch of times, or "Hello, my name is Matthew." Type that out. And if you want to do it again, we type "Hello, my name is Matthew." And as you can see, this is a lot of typing. Yeah, you could also um, copy paste. But let's say if instead we did something like this. Message equals hello, my name is Matthew. So I'm typing out hello, my name is Matthew once. And then I can do something like message. Print message. And you can see that's less typing. Okay. <clears throat> so the print function only works with string data values. Oh, no, it works with other values too. But like, you can't, yeah, maybe I should uh, <laughs> edit this slide. Like, it doesn't work with integer variables and character variables. Um, <clears throat> But what if we want to print a string and something not a string or character? So like an integer or a float. So we would be using the type conversion or type casting I talked about earlier. And here on this, you can pause this and take a look at it. And yeah, here is the str parentheses. So we turn we converted the value of 5 into a string and a hmm okay yeah so here's one way where it's hard coded but let's say we don't know what the number 5 is like we don't know how old they are until they input it and we assign that value to age so this wouldn't work this top way and here the second way, this is the way I like to do it, where it's like you convert, you do a conversion of the value in the variable. Another way is you can do these curly brackets and then do dot format and in the parentheses put the first variable that you want in the first curly brackets, comma, then the second variable you want in the second bracket, and so on. So if you had a third one, you'd have third curly bracket, and then comma after age, and then another variable. Okay. All right, so challenge. Um, here is a challenge for you guys to try and do. Okay, so using the tools you have now, let's put your new knowledge to the test. So you're gonna write a program that will ask the user for input, for its name, then you'll output the user's name. Next, you'll ask for the user to input what year they were born, and then you'll output the user's age. So yeah, what's my name? Um, there's Drake and Rihanna. If you get that reference, cool. So here's an example of a solution, like how it should be looking in your terminal. What is your name? The user inputs Matthew, the output, your name is Matthew, then what year were you born? The user inputs 1738, and the output, you are 282 years old. Okay, and yeah, so if you have any questions or feedback, please leave in the comments. Um, I'm going to go over the challenge solution now. So, 
if you don't want to spoil that, you know, you're working on it, just end the video here or pause it, do the challenge, and then see what I did. Okay. So, okay, I'm going to try and like go over my thought process. So I look at this, and here's a hint, input for its name. So I know a name is a string variable, and I get this name, I get this string value from the user. They're going to type their name. So first, I'm going to do name, well, let's call it username. I'm going to say it's equal to whatever value they give me, they input. And I'm going to do, okay, so here it says prompt, so that's a hint. What is your name? So I'm going to give the user a prompt and say, what is your name? Question mark. I'll put a space. <clears throat> and then... So the user does their input, then I output your name is plus whatever input they gave me. So I'm doing an output, so I'm going to be using the print function, and the beginning of the message says your name is space, it's going to be that plus the value they put in for username. So I think this works, this first half of the challenge. And good practice is to test, you know, along the way. Don't like write a large program and then say you're going to test. So let's go in our terminal. And why am I using the terminal instead of pressing the play button? Well, we'll be taking an in input and we can't do that in the output tab. So I'll go here, let's test this out. Python main.py, enter. What is your name? Quotation marks, Matthew, quotation marks, enter. And it says your name is Matthew. So cool, I got the first half of the challenge done. Uh, now let's look what the second part is. So prompt, what year were you born? The user inputs an integer variable, and then we have to output how old they are. Now mind you, this is different from the first one where we're just like parroting back. So we're gonna have to figure out how old they are. And um, <clears throat> so the information we know what year they're born. So how do you know how old someone is based off them telling you what year they're born? Um, just doing the subtraction. So of the co current year minus the year they were born. So at this time, it'd be 2020 minus 1738. So let's do this. So they're going to give us year they were born. So let's call this variable user uh, year born. And that's going to equal something that they input. And they tell us the prompt is what year were you born. So let's write that into the input function. <clears throat> what year were you born? Question mark, space. Okay, so the, what the input is going to be into the variable user year born. Now let's uh, do this. Okay, so we'll print out, uh, oops, scroll up, you are comp blank space plus, let's say, user year born, plus, quotation marks, space, 
years old. Okay, guys, this is totally going to work. So let me clear this. Let me run the program. What is your name? Matthew. Your name's Matthew. That works. What year were you born? I was born in 1738. Uh-oh, I got an error. Okay. Um, so cannot concatenate string and int objects. I'm looking here. It says file main.py line 5. So I look here at line 5. And let's look at here. You are. And yeah, this is an integer. I can't add them like this. So, okay. Then I think, or whatever, like, okay, Matt showed us how to do a type conversion or type cast. So let's do a type conversion and get the string value of this integer 1738. Now the program's totally gonna work. So I run that, what is your name? Matthew, enter, your name is Matthew. What year were you born? 1738. You are 1738 years old. Well, that's not right. I want it to say 282 years old. So this isn't going to work. Let's do this. Actually, I'll just delete it all. We didn't um, get their age. But we do know that the user's age will be the current year, 2020, minus the year they were born. So how can we do that? We can make another variable, call it user age. We can set it equal to 2020, our current year, minus user year born. And now, since this user age variable has the age stored inside we can do print you are space plus okay so we know let's do this we know to do the type conversion to string user age plus space years old now let's see how let's see what happens what is your name? Matthew. Your name is Matthew. What year were you born? 1738. You are 282 years old. And we did it. We completed the challenge. So some things, um, you could have also done something like this. So instead of making a third variable, you could have done user year born. My, oops, sorry. 2020 minus user year born. And let's say we did make this variable, so I'm going to comment it out using the hashtag symbol. And so comment, um, you can write comments in your lines of code, and that can be like explaining your program or like just giving yourself a message or a note. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, you do the program, it will ignore your comments. It's for the programmer. You know, it's for you to like see. So like when the program's running, it'll do all this, ignore this, do this. But okay, here's another solution. What's your name? Matthew. When were you born? 1738. 282 years old. So that's another way. Um, oh, I was gonna ask a question. Oh yeah, okay. So what's one problem with this code? Like, let's say I was using, this program works only, well, okay, think, pause. <laughs> Look at this code. Uh, what do you think is wrong with it in terms of future use. So pause the video if you don't want the answer. Okay. So the problem here is that we hard code the current year, 2020. 
So what if the year is now 2021? Well, this is going to be wrong because it's going to say 282 years old when they're 283, you know, and so on and so on. So, um, you weren't asked to do this, but, um, you know, getting you, uh, thinking, you could, what would you do to solve this problem? I'm going to tell you to pause it again and you can think about it. Okay, here is one solution that comes to my mind. You can do a, let's say, a variable called current year. You equal that, and you ask, oops, you ask the user, what year is it? Space. Excuse me. And they put in the current year, and then you can do current year minus user year born. Let me delete this comment. Or you could have done, so you can do this expression of current year minus user year born, or just do make a variable user age equal current year minus user year born and just print user age and let's run that oh wait okay I'm just doing let me click let's run it there's your name Matthew what year were you born? 1738. What year is it? 2020. You are 282 years old. And then just to show you, let's say it was the future. Were you born? 1738. What year is it? Let's say it's 2025. You are 287 years old. So there you go. Um, yeah, yeah. With uh, programming, it's good to break it down into smaller parts and uh, think about like long-term use. You know, uh, don't make things hard on yourself. And yeah, thank you for coming to this first chapter. If you have any questions, um, feedback, leave it in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Let me close this.